So far, you can store data within the variables of a program. However, when the program ends, this data is gone. And if you start a program again, you have to enter all that data again. To store data throughout multiple runs of a program, you have to write it into a file and read it back from that file. Welcome, I'm Kanz, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how to read and write files in Python. Reading the entire content of a file in Python is pretty easy and doesn't require a lot of code. So let's jump right into it. So first off, we need a variable that stores the file content and we call it file content and we assign an empty string to it. Then we need a new keyword and block, the with keyword that opens the with block. Because as we now open the file, the operating system or other programs can interact with that file as well. And the with statement and block prevents our program from crashing when another program tries to interact with that file. So we use with, then enter open, and open is a Python built-in function that opens a file for us and returns a variable we can interact with and read and write into it. As a parameter, open takes the file path and as our file is within the same directory as our Python file, we don't have to enter a directory, we just enter the name, which is zen.txt. And if we have a look at zen.txt, that just includes the first four lines of the Python pp20 or the zen of Python. Then, we, after the open, we have to use s and enter a variable. So, the return value of open is not assigned to a variable with an equal sign, but we use the s statement and that will redirect the return value of open into the variable file. Now we go into that with block and inside the with block we can now read from that file and store the content of the file in our file content variable. For that we enter file content equal file read and that will read the entire content of our file into file content. Now that we have read everything from our file into file contents, we can leave the with block and we do that by just going an indentation to the left and that will also automatically close the file we have opened inside the with block. That means the file can now be accessed by other programs and the operating system for writing. In other programming languages, you usually have to call close explicitly uh, but the with statement will take care of that for us. Now we can use print and enter file content. And when we run that program, we can see now on the command line that file content contains the content of our zen.txt file. And those are the first four lines of the zen of Python. When you deal with small files like the zen.txt we've used in this example, reading the entire file at once is no issue. However, when you deal with larger files, you can run into problems because the whole file content is stored in the main memory of the computer. And if the file size exceeds the main memory size of your computer, your program will crash and probably your computer will get pretty, pretty slow. So for that, you, we can also read a file line by line in Python. To read a file line by line in Python, we start off with the with statement, with open, and we still read the zen.txt file and store the file variable in file. Then we enter a, an infinite loop with while true. And in that loop, we enter line, file, read line. The read line function reads one line of the file and if we call it over and over again, it will always read the next line. The end of a line is marked with a special character, which is a new line character. On Unix systems like Linux or macOS, this new line character is backslash n, which is a new line and if you open a file, a plain text file, you can see there's line breaks and those line breaks are actually encoded with this new line character. Under Windows systems, this is a little bit different. There we have backslash new line, and then we have backslash R, which means carriage return, such that the cursor of our file goes back to the beginning of the new line. 
So keep that in mind when you deal with files coming from Windows and files coming from Linux. Now that we read a line within an infinite loop, we have to make sure to also end the infinite loop when we reach the end of the file. And for that, we're going to use an if statement. So if not line, we enter break. Line evaluates to false in an if statement if it doesn't contain any characters. So if read line returns an empty string, then we have reached the end of the file. And we break that. And after that break, we can print that line. So we won't print that line if it is the end of the file. We only print that line if it actually contains content. And that is the whole program. And if we run that, we can see it prints every line of our zen.txt file here. In between those lines, we can see that there is a, another new line because print always adds a new line at the end if we don't tell it otherwise. We can change that by adding a comma, end, and then adding a, an empty string. And end means that it adds something to the end of our string we have entered here in the print statement. And usually the default value is a new line. So if we run that again, we see we don't have the, those new lines anymore and we read the zen.txt file line by line. When you're new to Python and programming, it is sometimes hard to remember all the new concepts and functions. And therefore I created several Python cheat sheets. Even a cheat sheet for reading and writing files you can get for free as a high resolution PNG in my Gumroad shop. And if you want to print out those cheat sheets, you can even get a high resolution PDF for printing for a small amount of money in my Gumroad shop or as a tier one Patreon subscriber. So check out the links down below in the description to get your Python cheat sheets. Sometimes reading a file line by line isn't granular enough. So therefore you can actually read single characters and also move the cursor within the file from where you want to read a character. So let's open another file with open zen.txt as file. And then we use print file tell. The tell function tells us the current position of the cursor of the file. So if we open a file without any other properties, just open and then use tell, our cursor will be at position zero. So if we have a look at our zen.txt, it will be at this position here. And we can even see it here, uh, line one, column one, and the first character is actually column one. So it is actually in front of the first character. Now we can read one line from that file. So we enter file, read line. And when we run that, nothing else happens. But if we enter print file tell once again, we now see at the beginning, our cursor is at position zero. And afterwards we have read one line, our cursor is at position 32. And if we have a look back at our Zen and go back at the end of the file, we can see our cursor is at col column 31. So where does the additional character come from? That is actually the new line character. So our cursor is now after the new line characters. And those are actually two new line characters as this is a Windows file. We can change the file type from CRLF to LF and then save that file and run our program again. And we can see it's now at 31 because now it uses the Unix new line character. To just read a single character from a file, we use file read and then we enter the number of characters we would like to read from that file. And afterwards, if we enter print file tell and have a look at our cursor position, the cursor now moved only one position. And that is now after the E of explicit. So if we enter print file read one, it should show us the X of explicit and it does that. With tell, we get the current position in the file. But there's another function that is called seek that lets us set a new position in the file. And if we enter file seek zero and then and print file read line, let's see what happens. Now we read the first line of our zen.txt because with seek zero, our file pointer is again at the beginning of the file. 
and we can also check that with print file tell it will tell us that it is at position zero we can also enter a different number in seek to put our file pointer to an arbitrary position in the file so if we enter file seek 10 and then use print file read line it will read from position 10 until the end of the line so if we enter that we can see now our file pointer is at position 10 which is here after beautiful and then only outputs is then ugly we can combine the seek and tell function to move the cursor of the file to another position from the current position in this program we have an infinite while loop which reads one character from a file checks if that character was actually not the end of the file and then prints it on the command line so if we run that we can see the zen of python and now i'm going to add a new line to that loop and here i go going to use seek and tell in combination so every time i read one character from that file our file pointer is moved one position forward and we can check that with file tell now i would like to move my current file position using seek so i use file seek and from the current position i am at i would like to advance one character more so i add file tell plus one inside file seek and now let's see what happens if we run that we can see we only read every second character of that file so instead of beautiful we now read but flea because every second character from that file wasn't read as we have jumped over it using this line where we manually move the file pointer after we read one character one position forward and if you like this video so far make sure to give it a like so more people can start learning about reading and writing files in python now that you know how to read files in python let's talk about how to write files in python and when talking about writing files we also have to talk about different modes we can open a file in and there are several different modes and those modes are actually entered in the open function the default mode is read and it is encoded as a single r character so if we have a look at this uh, code here that reads the complete file content at once and we run that we can see with the read mode it opens the file and we can also remove the read mode once again and we can see it does the same thing there are several different modes we can open a file in and i'm not going to cover every mode in this video only the ones that are most useful for us at the moment if you want to find out about all the modes that are available check out the cheat sheet i uploaded on gumroad there are all the different modes you can open a file in together with a decision tree that tells you which mode you have to use for which purpose if we want to read and write a file and the file already exists we use the mode r plus the mode r plus will open a file that already exists sets the file pointer at position zero and also lets us write into the file so let's first check that it actually puts the position at the front so we enter print file tell and if we run that we can see we have zero then we can use file write and that will write a string at the position where our current file pointer is so if we enter file abc and we know that we are at position zero it will write into the file at abc then let's check file tell where our cursor is and then read the whole file content once again if we run that we can see first we are at zero then we call write abc that will write three characters at position zero in our file and then when we have a look at file tell we are at position three if we then read the whole file content we see that something is missing from the word beautiful because the characters in the line are not shifted 
they are overwritten when we use write. So what it does here is it writes at the first three positions of our file ABC and overwrites the first three characters of the word beautiful. After the write has finished, our file pointer is then at a different position and we read after ABC. We can also use file seek zero and then run that file, run that, and we can see now our position is at zero and instead of beautiful we read ABC beautiful. And we can also have a look at our Zen file. Here we can see ABC beautiful. So as a reminder, R plus opens a file for reading and writing when the file exists and places the file pointer at the front. And if we use write at a certain position, it will overwrite everything that is already at those positions. The next mode we're going to have a look at is W. The W mode opens a file and if the file already exists, removes all its content and then places the file pointer at the front of the file. So if we use instead of R plus W and run that, an error ap appears because our file is not readable because W is only for writing files. So let's comment out our file content and then run that. We can see it still tells us the file position zero, then we write ABC and then the file position after the writing and we can then place it back to zero, but it doesn't have an effect now. Let's have a look at Zen. Now Zen only includes ABC because the whole file content, so the first four lines of the Zen of Python, are now removed by the W. If we also want to read the file while we have it open with W, we have to enter a plus after the W, and then we can uncomment those two lines, run that, and we can see now we read ABC from the file after we have written it. So if we add a plus to the mode, it always opens our file as read and write. After R and W, there's another mode that is A, also called the append mode. And if we change our mode to A here, it opens our file in write-only mode, so we can't read from it. So let's comment out those lines. And if we run that, we can see it prints out different positions, because now our initial position is three and the position after writing is six. Because the append mode opens a file that exists or doesn't exist, and if the file exists, it sets the file pointer at the end of the file. So if we look at send.txt, we now have ABC ABC in it. And if we run it again, we can see it's now at six and nine, and the file is ABC ABC ABC, because every time we open that file in write-only mode with A, it places the file pointer at the end of the file and then we can write in that file. And of course, we can also use A plus and that will open the file in read and write mode. And if we run that, we will this time get four ABCs because we already had three ABCs in, nine, 12, and then we set seek to zero to the beginning of the file. And then we read everything that is in the file and that is ABC, ABC, ABC. I hope this video was helpful for you. You can also find a written article on the video content on my website for which you can find the link down below in the description. If you have any questions regarding reading and writing files in Python, leave me a comment. Don't forget to pick up your Python cheat sheets together with the read and write cheat sheet over in my Gumroad shop or on Patreon with a big shout out to my Patreon subscribers. Make sure to hit the bell icon and subscribe so you get notified when I release a new video on Python programming and computer science. I hope you have a fantastic day and to see you soon. Bye bye!